Halo was something that gave a lot of value to ordinary people. People with ordinary jobs who just lived life and came together to escape reality for a night. Maybe I stand alone on this, but gaming used to feel like a true escape. Something that could steal your attention, but also created moments that make you remember a game. But now, and maybe it's a personal experience, but Halo and gaming itself doesn't feel like that same escape. You may call this video nostalgia bait and bring down the glory that was Halo, but nostalgia can be both negative and positive. Our memories can get distorted, and we either remember it being much worse or better than it actually is. But luckily for us, media was able to capture a lot of those similar memories and hold up the facts for everyone. Today I wanted to expand off this incredibly well-crafted video made by Crobcat called Remember Halo. Without speaking a word himself, he really puts into perspective just what Halo has become, what it meant to fans, and overall I believe it also teaches us about the current gaming scene. I highly recommend checking it out, and if this video doesn't leave an impact, go check out his. I also have timestamps right here if you want to jump around. But why are so many people invested in the franchise? What does it mean to people and why was it as good as people praise it to be? Halo was the closest game I think we ever had to real perfection. It was carefully crafted for the casuals, the competitors, the hardcore competitors, the story lovers, the creative people, your family and friends. Halo looked out for a lot of us. Anyways, let's talk about Halo. Hey, yo, how's everybody doing today? Feeling pretty goddamn good, yourself? Good. First time in like half a decade I've played Halo 3. I figured I'd get on one last time before they shut it down. Yeah, fucking hey man. Good job. You're fucking here. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wait, what are you doing? Oh god! <laughs> Oh, no, it killed me! <laughs> <laughs> There's so many stories where some brave hero decides to give their life to save the day. And because of their sacrifice, good guys win, survivors all cheer, and everybody lives happily ever after. But the hero never gets to see that ending. They'll never know if their sacrifice actually made a difference. Halo and other games back then had this element I don't think many of us really think about, at least not to the same degree. What makes Halo more than just a game is that you could share it with friends, families, neighbors, and even strangers. Gamers used to have that stereotype of being those nerdy losers who sat in front of a screen, while today's gamers have become more normal in society. And well, I think the opposite of that. I think older gamers were cooler and more sociable rather than today's where you aren't really encouraged to do much of that. Halo was able to bring people together of all kinds through the sociability elements that it brought. Couch co-op isn't prioritized anymore because why would you do that when you can connect with your pal thousands of miles away? It seems obvious that's the better solution, and of course it's a good route to play games, but Split Screen was able to be played on one console, only needing one game, and allowed anyone to play. It could be someone that may not be able to play from their own home. It could be your friend that wasn't allowed to get the game. You get to be on a couch together, next to someone you probably like and playing whatever the heck you want. You don't get the same personal experiences with simple mechanics like that. Here's another example of Halo being way more sociable than nowadays. LAN parties. A gamer's delight when all you would get together at one place, probably stacked to the brim with food and drinks to play Halo all night. Surrounded by people whose days may have been bad, but their nights certainly filled with joy. I'm sure a lot of us haven't experienced something like that, but considering we're gamers, I'd imagine a lot of us would love to do it. Back when gamers still had to actually talk with other people, they may have been treated with some special, relatable connections the night before a big Halo release. And my oh my, were these midnight releases incredibly huge. Strangers all lined up to get a masterpiece like Halo 3. Except, they weren't strangers. You already knew them. They were those guys and girls in your Slayer matches, playing on those fan-made Forge creations, and the others you met along the way. They were all the same kinds of people in that line all right in front of you in the real world. You don't really get that nowadays. You kind of just boot up your system and play with a few buddies. It's almost just mindless gaming now and hoping the next big game is somewhat decent. It wasn't just us gamers in on it. These midnight releases were real events that the world knew about. It felt much more grand and meaningful, like gaming was the sh And we weren't gonna let anyone take that from us. Halo was our game. 
and we just didn't know how much things would go downhill from there. So I said Halo was the closest game to perfection that I've ever seen, and I say that because from the perspective of all types of gamers, there was a masterpiece in every mode and provided for different types of gamers. It was made for the sweats, the casuals, the people who may not even actively play games, the creative people, and the ones who love a good story. I've never seen many games be able to do that, and do it so well. Prime Halo 3 it had campaign, esports, casual and ranked playlists with more wacky and kickback modes sprinkled on top of it, forge where unlimited possibilities were capable of being made, and a theater mode to capture the best moments. Maybe it seems simple, but all those modes were filled with things to do. Play a casual game of Slayer, mess around on the campaign and explore outside the map, be the last one standing on infection, sit on forge creating a playground of wacky fun, win games and rank up. Those are just a few possibilities. All of that in 2007 packed into one $60 purchase. And they all did it so well and was able to satisfy so many gamers that we all found something in common. Our love for playing Halo. All sides were mostly at peace with one another and instead contributed to the environment and culture that it was. No casuals and sweats blaming each other for ruining a game. At least not very often. I think that's why I miss Halo the most. Not the details and mechanics that made it fun, but instead what it created place to come together and socialize. The people. I couldn't play Halo alone forever. What's the point if I can't share that moment together with somebody else? It's just sad to see all those moments go and think about never having them. It hurts not having that as much today. It's all about other things now. There's different priorities and it feels like the magic was lost. And this is where you could say nostalgia bait, or stating we are growing up. But I refuse to believe that's the issue. Why can't I experience those same things just because I have a little less time now? I think we had it so good, that we never realized how it can all fade away so quickly. And now others who have moved on or never even experienced the game, will assume that you grew up, and that our current games are just as good. Well, I want to see a side-by-side -side comparison of a game that does it just as good. Now we can't lie to ourselves, Bungie moved on from Halo and 3 for 3 was assigned the job of continuing a franchise that was still around in its prime. How do you take a franchise like that and continue that same success without making mistakes along the way? Halo at its peak was always raising the bar. After witnessing the revolutionary Halo 1, we got a Halo 2 that went above and beyond creating the future standard for games despite going through developmental problems. And then somehow, without letting Ego go to their head, they then made Halo 3, which debatably is the greatest Halo game. The successful trilogy that capitalized on each predecessor surely left fans thinking the future would be even brighter, because Bungie proved they made each game better than the last. They continued on to make the ODST DLC Halo Reach, and then had Ensemble Studios make an RTS Halo that satisfied a different genre of gamers. And although there's great debate around their last big title before moving on, Bungie still made a stellar one within their 2010's Halo Reach. And after this, is when we started to see Halo torn limb from limb until it was no longer Halo. It was in 2012's launch of Halo 4 when we finally saw the continuation off the original trilogy last being released in 2007. Halo 4 would be the first mark in this past decade to push the identity further away from what had made it so unique in the first place. It was no longer being Halo. It was colliding with the world of others. Multiplayer started to become a wannabe Call of Duty, and the overall design was an unnecessary change that left question marks everywhere. Our campaign was to be dull with a mediocre story that didn't have enough moments to it. Why were the marines no longer fun? Why were all these new characters bland? Why were the enemies boring to fight against? Everything was just weird, and it felt like Halo was thrown into a blender. But we haven't really experienced this before. Maybe it was just a fluke, and we finally had a not so good Halo game. Maybe Halo 5 would bounce back and certainly get back on track. Well, Halo 5 was decent in some areas, but there was one major problem that sat with the majority of fans. It was a different game. The multiplayer was well received, but the movement was more advanced than ever, and the design made it look vastly different compared to previous Halos. A design change that was unnecessary, and left the game looking like a completely different one. But there was some good. The multiplayer felt smooth and tried new things. The forge mode although being delayed, was pushing its boundaries further and further but there was many people that they weren't able to please. 
The campaign and its story was a complete failure, and the marketing leading up to it didn't even fit what happened. Theater mode was essentially broken, and then we started getting used to unfinished games. Before Halo 5 even came out, a year prior we had Halo 2's 10 year anniversary, and for it, they decided to completely remaster the game and release a collection of most of the other Halo games. What was supposed to be a love letter to us fans, and would give OGs repopulated old Halo games, was instead a broken mess that was unplayable, and they didn't fix it for years. So much to having the ultimate collection of Halo games, they really only served the purpose of playing offline single player for a good while there. Thankfully the Halo 2 remaster looked incredible, and the collection was later fixed. But all that delayed time makes any momentum much more slimmer. You can miss out on tens of thousands of players when you have all this hype leading up to a release to be met with disappointment. You may fix your game, but not a lot of those same players will come back. You miss the opportunity. What soon would follow is training our numbness to be okay with unfinished Halo games and the removal of features that used to make the franchise fun for everyone. It's the little things that you may be okay sacrificing, but eventually all those little things added up to be a full experience. And my favorite part of Crowcat's video was how he showcased those little things fading away such as no more split screen, no dual wielding, no playable elites, and having standard release content being added way later into the life cycle. Halo Infinite was supposed to be the redemption of the franchise, or at least the step in the right direction, and it seemed like it was going that way. Step into the shoes of a Halo fan. We're dreaded. Our days of enjoying a Halo game have been getting smaller, and our hope was diminishing. Halo 4, 5, and the Master Chief Collection were big punches to what remained of that hope we had of Halo getting better. Then it happened. The reveal gave new light to a lot of longtime fans as it was giving off all the good signs of a true Halo game. The design was back and we could tell they knew what was important now. All our hype was there, and this may finally be our long awaited return into the spotlight. But most importantly, a return to those fun times we all used to consistently have. It was a big gap between Halo 5 and Infinite. It was almost like waiting for Rockstar to release a new game. It just took forever. But then, our hopes were crushed and set us back further than before. It was certain that 3 for 3 did go in the right direction, but also took big steps backwards in areas that did decently before. The gameplay was being praised as smooth and fluid. The game was empty. It was deserted. There was little to do in a game full of potential. We didn't have nearly as much as what we had before. We are now in the ever increasing world of unfinished games. All that hype was gone, and what remains is the scraps of fans trying to hold the legacy together. Everything is being released late, one at a time just not proving to be enough. Eventually, there will be no more fans with the motivation to continue. And at this rate, we soon will see Halo in the gaming graveyard. A true masterpiece and memorable craft of anything only exists when we see an emotional connection. My love for Halo is shared by many around me and I couldn't have that same love for the franchise without the other players. We were living in the glory days without realizing the impending doom that was right around the corner. As I look back into some of the old marketing for these games, I couldn't think of another franchise that did it better. There was something so magical and heart touching enjoying a previous Halo game to then see what was next. And the trailers themselves were storytelling and way better than the TV show that slaps the Halo title onto it. They were everything Halo was at the time, and everyone knew it. They could have made some lousy trailers because they knew the game would have done well either way, but they left us with trailers that still get remembered today. And it's fine a lot of people have moved on. I expect them to, and to be on to better things. It's still very important to remind ourselves what worked. I guess that's why history is important and why we learn about it. There was just no better game if it couldn't bring people together. And that's what we want in life, right? For people to come together and to get through this life together? to share experiences to make that world around us much more fulfilling? At that point, do games actually mean something? Is that why we play them? Is that when a game becomes more than just a game? Halo was that for me. It meant something. It was a world where I could find great relief while also building something positive for myself. It was responsible for many great things that you just had to be there 
to understand the differences between back then compared to now. I will always appreciate the time that we had with some of the brightest moments in my life. So yes, I guess you could say, I remember Halo. And I miss it.